Better Spaces is a health and happiness solution for today's hybrid workplace. My name is Dr. Paul Kachoa, and I'm the owner and physical therapist of PAR5 Physical Therapy here in Randolph, New Jersey. And I partnered with them to bring you an easy and educational workday session. Today's session is Deskercise. It's a quick exercise session for office workers where we're gonna be learning simple stretches and exercises that desk bound individuals, especially if you're at work, can, it re can do to relieve tension and improve posture. So a little bit about me, I'm a, uh, I, have a, I have a doctorate of physical therapy from Mercy University in Dobbs Ferry, New York. I also have an exercise physiology degree from Rutgers University. I'm a certified orthopedic clinical specialist and a certified dry needling specialist as well. And I've been in the PT field for over 25 years. So we're gonna be talking a lot about things that I've gained over my years of experience here. Um, so hopefully you find it helpful. So let me pull up my slides, pop that up. There we are, desk exercise, quick exercises for office workers. I know that since, um, I guess since the past three years, we've really shifted to a hybrid type of workplace where you're at home or in the, in the office and you, know, you, you set up a workstation at home or you have one at, at work and everybody wants to stay active, stay, start moving. We're gonna talk about what you need to do to maintain uh, your health and fitness as you're trying to get your work done throughout the day. Now, because I'm a physical therapist, I have to put this disclaimer up. The information that we're going to be going over today is aimed at a general and broad population. It is helpful information, but if you're dealing with something specific, make sure that you get a thorough physical exam from a medical professional so that you can have all the associated root factors of your issue taken care of so you can get a uh, thorough treatment and achieve your goals. All right. So if you've ever been to any of my classes before, this video, this slide is going to be familiar. If you take anything away from today's session, know that the body functions on an alternating pattern of stability and mobility. If this pattern is disrupted, then pain or injury is the result. Oftentimes, people will come to see me with a pain in a specific spot, like they have knee pain and they've been to PT before, or they've been to see an orthopedic surgeon or whatever, and they just focus on the knee. And inevitably, it might feel a little bit better with some treatment, but the pain inevitably comes back and they're kind of starting from zero again. The main thing that, the way that our body functions is because we are a connected system of systems, right? So if we're dealing with a pain point in one area, we wanna make sure that the areas or the segments above and below are doing their job. Their role, like for example, for the knee is supposed to be a stable segment, right? It's a very simple joint. All it does is just bend and straighten. Now, the hip and the ankle, which are the segments above and below, they need to be mobile. So the hip needs to be mobile, the ankle needs to be mobile. Oftentimes, if you're just addressing the knee, but you have a stiff hip or a stable hip or a stiff ankle, classified as a stable ankle, it's not doing its job, your body moves through this pattern and tries to compensate. So it makes up for the range of motion or the mobility that you're missing in the other joints and then makes something that's supposed to be stable on unstable segments. So you have to watch out for that. If you're not addressing the body in its entirety, then you might run into problems where things just come and go and then they return again. All right. So one thing about sitting and working, your body adapts to the positions that you put it in. Right. So one example that I give and one simple example is that if you put your elbow in a cast and we casted it at this angle, this 90 degree angle for, I don't know, six weeks or so. And then we take that cast off your elbow is gonna be very stiff. It's not gonna be able to straighten or bend initially. It's, got, it's gonna be really hard to try and get that elbow to go all the way straight and all the way bend, all the way bent. That's the same thing that happens to our body on a daily basis. We have this connective tissue that's called fascia. And fascia is you know, the sweater-like spiderweb material that gives our body its shape. It connects everything. It gives our muscles its shape. Um, if, if our muscles didn't have fascia, it would just be 
hamburger meat looking, right? So it's like unstructured. So this fascia gets formed and broken down in response to positions and movements that we do. When we sleep, if we're in one position for an extended amount of time, through that six to eight hours or nine hours that you get sleep, you might feel stiff in the morning. And one way to get rid of that stiffness is just to move and stretch. So these layers of fascia, they can get sticky if they're not mobile, if they're not moving frequently. But the very easy remedy to that is just moving, just unsticking that fascia, stretching it out like a wool sweater that's been in the closet all season. And then come, uh, come winter, you gotta take it out and stretch it out, it feels a little bit you know, uh, stiff. And then once you get it loose, it, it's fine, right? So that's kind of like fascia. And if our bodies are in a sustained position, maybe a bad position, um, we just adapt to that. But the big thing is that people think that there's this perfect posture that you need to be in, you need to be totally straight. You know, our body wasn't designed to be in one position for too long or one shape for too long. So if you're sitting and you're thinking, oh yeah, I've got my perfect ergonomic setup, a la this, right? Those are a lot of 90 degree angles that we're looking at, right? So I'm just gonna pull this up really quick so you can kind of see, um, see this. And you know, this is a very classic ergonomic setup where you have the screen, I mean, I think nowadays it needs to be a little higher than the top of your eye, eye level at the top of your screen. But, you know, regardless, the sitting position, you know, feet flat on the floor and then the workstation at that elbow height. So you bend 90 degrees. That's fine. And then the standing position, very much the same thing with the workstation being at elbow height. Those are always good. Right. And that's the classic uh, ergonomic setup that we've been known for uh, prescribing for such a long time. But, but because we have these 90 degree angles and we're holding them for a long period of time, our bodies are gonna adapt to that. So this is a non-negotiable here, that every 30 minutes you need to change, at the very least, change your position. So if you're sitting every 30 minutes, we need to kind of stop, take a break and then move. Or if you're in a standing position, Every hour, we need to stop, change, and do something, okay? And that varies from person to person. Most people, they might not be able to tolerate standing for 60 minutes. So at least for every 30 minutes, we need to move. We need to do something. So our bodies were designed for motion. They weren't designed to sit still. So the exercises that we're going to go over today, we want to try and fit them in and almost um, – uh, thir think about it as like a workout snack or an exercise snack where you're just taking bits and pieces and fitting them throughout the day. You're not having to wait till like after work and going to the gym to accomplish some type of exercise or, or maintenance to your body. You know, it's all about maintaining it when you can. The more frequent you do it and the more consistent you are at it, the better the improvements are the less pain stiffness that you have. So one simple routine that I usually give people is we take a set of exercises, whatever it is, and just set a timer, right? You might already have a, you might already have a timer to remind you to stand up. I know a lot of uh, iPhone or Apple Watch users have a reminder to stand and move, right? And sometimes they just ignore it, like I do. But it gives you an awareness of like, hey, you need to move, right? So this is one little prescription that I usually give people is that we'll do three rounds of a set of exercises, right? 30 seconds on and 10 seconds off or 10 second rest. So the series of exercises I've got like, uh, let's see here, about seven of them, you know, um, built up here. We're gonna go over them in a moment. Um, we just go each one for 30 seconds. You don't have to count reps, right? And then you set a timer for 30 seconds and then for 10 seconds you rest or you can just look at your clock and then you do it again. The next exercise in, that, in the series, 30 seconds and you get a 10 second break and then you so on and so forth. When you're done the end, then you can go back to the top of the list and then continue, all right? So let me pull it up really quick so you can get the preview. All right, so here it is. Squats, seated arm angles, angels, sorry, desk plank, 
sitting slouch and extension, a burger pose and a desk push up. And there's like a bonus exercise in there. All right. So we're going to come back to that in a second. I'm going to pull up my two shot here, adjust my angle so you can kind of see me. I've got my box set up and my little chair. This is going to be um, my, my workstation, right? So if I'm working here, I've got my computer and, and desk set up and I'm like, all right, my timer has gone off for me to move. And then I'm going to set the timer for 30 seconds to do our first movement, which is the squat. Now, very simply, you can just kind of put your hands, and this is all based upon what you can tolerate. If you're doing some of these exercises and it hurts, then maybe you can scale it a little bit, right? So very simple, just hands on the desk, and then you're going to lean a little bit forward and then stand up and then sit down, right? So the pace that you're going at is what is comfortable. I would like to call it, cons consider it a conversational pace. It doesn't have to be fast, but it gets you extending the hips and bending the knees and bending the hips, right? So we wanna get through that full range of motion for 30 seconds. We wanna make sure that when we get to the top, we're extending through the entire hip, right? Camera's a little bit off. We wanna make sure everything is straight and then you're sitting down. Now, from the front view, the key point with this is as you're moving through this motion, this squat and sit, that the knees stay over the ankles. A lot of times people with weak hips will start to do this type of motion where the knees go in and then they complete their standing and then they do that again. Now, that movement repeatedly throughout the day is what can cause some knee issues. So we wanna make sure that your feet are about shoulder width apart and the knees stay over the ankles as you're doing the motion for 30 seconds, all right? So again, just from the side view, I'm holding onto the desk up and down. All right, so that's gonna be 30 seconds. You get a 10 second break after that. Then our second exercise is called seated arm angels. And you wanna think about just putting your hands up like 90 degrees, like a field goal position. And we're just going to move up and down. You think about like if you did like a snow angel, right? You're on the ground. You're kind of just waving your arms up and down, sliding them on your back in the snow to make that snow angel. It's very similar, but we're just going to create a little bit of a bend in the elbow. All right. So this is the front view. We're just kind of going up and down. Maybe you might want to think about it as like a jumping jack type motion even, right? 30 seconds up and down. The key point with this is from the front view, you can see as I pull my shoulder blades back, it pulls my chest out, right? And pulls my shoulders back from the side view. The movement is along that same plane. I don't wanna be doing it like through here in the front. So if I'm sitting up nice and tall, my hands and my arms are just outside my peripheral vision. So I'm working through, again, a range of motion that feels comfortable at a pace that you can be conversational, all right? 30 seconds on, and then you get a 10 second break. Next one's gonna be the desk plank. So that gets you out of the chair, and then we put your hands on the table or on your desk, and then just put yourself on your tippy toes and think about getting your body in a straight plank position. Here, my hips, my shoulders, my knees, my ankles are all in line. I don't wanna be back here like this. If I am straight like this, I really have to engage my core. It activates my arms. I'm holding myself up a little bit through here and that's gonna be 30 seconds. You could uh, scale this as much as you want by bringing your hands in a little bit closer. The more that you get the lean, the farther you are, the more difficult this exercise is gonna be. So again, 30 seconds at an intensity that's sustainable for that time, all right? So that's our desk plank. And then we're gonna go back for our next one after a 10 second break. We're gonna go into our slouch and over correction or slouch and extension. So we just get the spine moving. So I put my hands on my knees. I've got my feet flat underneath my hips, right? So hip width apart with my feet. And then I'm gonna slouch. And as I slouch, I'm really focusing on tilting the pelvis. I'm sitting back on my tailbone and I can bring the chin down. And I'm gonna reverse that and sit up as tall as I can and you're gonna look up. From this position, we're just gonna reverse and then go down and then up, 30 seconds. We wanna focus on the pelvis from the bottom, tilting backwards as we go into that slouch position and then tilting forward as we look 
up. So that slouch, full range of motion of the spine, bending, and then full extension through the spine, extending up. All right, again, 30 seconds, get a 10 second break. The next one's gonna be a Bruger pose. And this can be done in sitting as well. You're basically gonna be sitting at the edge of your chair here. If you do have armrests, we need to get past the armrests on the side of the chair. So we're gonna place the palms facing forward. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna imagine a string from the top of your head. You're gonna try and pull yourself up. That string is pulling your head up to the ceiling. And then you're gonna turn your palms facing forward and we're gonna push the fingertips to the floor, okay? So here we go, we create a little bit of tension. The more tension you feel, like pushing really you know, strongly down into the floor with your fingertips, palms facing forward and pushing the top of your head up, holding that for 30 seconds, it becomes very taxing. But this is basically a postural reset from the rounded position that we're in, right? to the extended position where we actively have to pull our shoulder blades back and down and then the head nice and tall. And as we're doing this head move here, the key point with this is as we're creating that tension, the string from the top of the head, the string is not in the front part of the head where you're looking up like this. If the chin comes up, that's a fault. We wanna make sure that our chin is down, our head is pointing forward, and that string is pulling from the top of our head just straight up. So we're creating that tension, 30 seconds on, 10 second break. And then we can do some of our, our last exercise, 30 seconds of a desk push up. So <clears throat> from here, <clears throat> sorry, from here, again, just like with the plank, <clears throat> the farther my feet are, the more aggressive this exercise is going to be. <clears throat> so I can be really close and then do a push up like this and then come up, <clears throat> or I can be really far and then really work my arms that way. <clears throat> so the key point with this is you try and put as much weight onto your hands as possible to do this move. If it's <clears throat> too difficult for you to do it with any type of lean like this, you could stand up <clears throat> and then do one of these push-ups like this, where you're just kind of bending the knees and hips. This is the easy version, right? And this is the more advanced version where we're going out and then in. The key point of performance with any push-up that you're doing is you want to make sure that the hands and the elbow stay in line. Just like with the knees, with the squat, we keep the knee over the ankle. As you're pushing and pulling or pushing with this push-up, the elbow and the wrist should be in line and closer to the body than you think it should be. All right? So I'm going to show you from the front view. If I'm here, I'll widen this out and I go wide with my elbows like this, here we go. That's typically how people do push-ups. That puts a lot of strain on your shoulder. We would like to kind of take the hands in a little bit closer and have that elbow line up, mostly just past my ribs and then try and come up like this. A closer grip will save the shoulder joint and create less stress on the shoulder, okay? So that's our seated push-up all right oh i've got one more thing too <clears throat> bonus exercise let me grab my my band here but if you have access to some type of exercise band all right some type of elastic a bonus exercise for 30 seconds would be a pull apart it's basically hands are going to be at shoulder height and you're going to pull straight back creating that tension of you know shoulder blades together, chest out, and then back out. My elbows remain as straight as I can make them, and the movement is just from the shoulder blades. So this is a bonus exercise. All the other exercises, we didn't need any specialized equipment. This is the only one that if you have something easy, um, a portable uh, exercise band, that banded pull apart is a good one to do for 30 seconds, all right? So that's our sequence. We're just going to go through each exercise for 30 seconds with a 10 second break in between. And you could do maybe three rounds if you want. If it's your first time exercising and you can't tolerate things very well, just kind of do one round through 30 seconds on 10 seconds off each one and then take a break. All right. So let's pull that list up again. So if I 
come back here. So this is our three rounds, 30 seconds on, 10 second break. And then our lists here, you can take a second to write that down. Um, squats, right? So squats can be hands on the desk, feet shoulder width apart, keeping the feet flat. That's another thing too. We want to keep the heels down and feet flat as we're doing those squats. And the seated arm angels, basically just elbows slightly bent, just making those angels like you were doing snow angels on the, on the snow, just up and down. The desk plank, again, the farther the feet are away from your desk, the more advanced and more stress on your abdominals and your core. And then we have the sitting slouch and, and extension. We want to be able to tilt and move through the pelvis, the lower back, the upper back of the head and neck. The entire spine is going through a nice range of motion with that. The Bruger pose is basically our uh, postural reset where we're sitting up as tall as you can. Palms are rotated forward. Fingertips are being pushed to the ground. And you can imagine that string at the top of your head getting pulled up to the ceiling. So we have a long spine with a lot of tension in between the shoulder blades going down into the ground. And then the desk push-up. The desk push-up is, again, you know, you could scale that as much as you want, depending upon how much weight you put through your hands and the position of your feet, all right? And then that extra one, which is like a, uh, um, a bonus with the banded pull-aparts, all righty? So I hope you had a good time. We ran through a couple of exercises here, and I hope you feel in reinvigorated and uh, more mobile and stronger than you did in the beginning, all righty? Okay, so I'm gonna give it like a 10-second uh, countdown here. If anybody has any questions, feel free to use the chat and uh, let me know if there's anything that you have issues with or want to go over before I sign off for today. <clears throat> All righty. Oh, you're welcome. Yeah. All right, everybody. Thank you for joining me today. You could look for this session and many more on demand on any of the Better Spaces apps. Hey, you know what? I'll be back Tuesday, February 13th with strategies for healthy aging. It's maintaining your fitness over time, all right? We'll explore strategies for maintaining fitness and well-being as we age. We'll discuss the unique considerations for exercise in different life stages. So addressing common concerns such as joint health, balance, maintaining muscle mass as we age, and we can discover a tailored fitness approach and how that can support healthy aging and contribute to an active and fulfilling lifestyle. All right. Thank you for joining me again. Any questions, you can email me here at info or paul at par5pt.com or team at betterspaces.com. All right. Thanks for coming and be well. Bye-bye.